In today's module, I am going to discuss about the space, a very important as well as crucial concept in the field of geography. And this concept was given by the Edward Soja, the most recent one, is given by the Edward Soja. He also wrote a book on postmodernism in 1949. So he gave uh, five summative arguments or say the thesis uh, which brings out the concept of space. Before going into detail, let me tell, tell you about the, uh, the discipline of geography, if you see, was dominated by uh, the Western thought, the, uh, the critical Western thought, uh, in last two centuries, but in late 20th century, there was a ontological shift. Ontological shift means ontological means the nature of being, the nature of the world. So we all are seekers of knowledge. We all are the seekers of the knowledge. So this ontological it means uh, how the knowledge has been produced, how the knowledge has been created, and uh, what aspects we look when we when we talk about the, any knowledge fields or any when we talk about the world of being of our existence so there was a spatial turn which is also known as the ontological shift in late 20th century uh, which gave geography a new way of looking at the uh, at the field at the field so that that turn uh, special turn in late uh, 20th century is what we are going to discuss about which is known as a third space given by the Edward Soja. So in his first thesis, let's, let's discuss about the first thesis. In his first thesis, he said that the contemporary critical studies in the field of humanities and social sciences have been experiencing a new special turn. So all of this uh, broader humanity, uh, this disciplines of humanities and social sciences have been experiencing a, this new spatial turn. Means it is not only uh, it is not only the do in the domain of geography, but it it is also in the domain of other disciplines like sociology, history, anthropology. So this spatial turn is not only changing geography, but it is also changing the the perspective of other discipline as well. One of the most important intellectual development in late 20th centuries, so this space, the concept of space is one of the most important intellectual development. It means not only in, in, not only in our country, but all over where the, uh, there are the schools of thought, of geography, as well as the other disciplines, so there was an intellectual development of in the late 20th century which talks about the concept of space. Scholars have begun to interpret space and speciality of the human life. So before 20th, late 20th century, before that period, the knowledge which has been produced since the times, since the hu human civilization was only limited to the historical perspective, that is the time and the society or the social relation but there was no concept of this speciality as it is uh, seen in this diagram, the trilex of being, the trilex of being. So these, all of these three, they are interdependent and they are inseparable. You cannot study uh, history without space. You cannot study society without the history. So they all have the link. They are interwoven. They are very complex. They are interwoven and they are very complex. To study uh, any f uh, in any field, you have to uh, take uh, you have to bring these aspects into your knowledge. So this thesis says that scholars have begun to interpret this space and speciality of the human life with the same critical insights and interpretation power as have traditionally have been given to the time and the history. Here, on the one hand, time is the histor historicality of the human life. On the other hand, the social relations and the society. Society is the sociality of the human life. 
So this diagram, the trilex of being, project the concept of the space according to this first thesis. There are also other four theses. There are total five summative uh, arguments or thesis, which brings a new geographical imagination, which brings a new geographical imagination into the disciplines and the knowledge which will be produced by these aspects will be more beneficial, will be more beneficial than the prior one, which we were uh, using since the last two, two centuries, if you see, the whole of this uh, knowledge was dominated by the Western thought, by the, by the critical Western thought. However, there, there is a special turn, you have to understand, this special turn came in late 20th century. And this special turn, he, uh, it changed the notion of space, it changed the notion of the discipline. Edward Soja, this concept of space, he said that the project of rebalancing the trilex, which we discussed, which we have discussed already in thesis first or argument first, by Edward Soja. So he said that we have to rebalance this trilex. So we have to rebalance it by uh, by uh, introducing by introducing a concept of third space, which brings out the second argument of Edward Soja, which says that the geographical imagination, especially as it has developed within the spatial disciplines continue to be confined by an encompassing dualism. So there is a dualism. So, so there is a dualism of perceived and conceived spaces. So there is a dualism like objectivity versus subjectivity, material versus mental, and real versus imagined, and things in space versus thoughts about space. So he said over the last 200 years, so there was a dualism in a, in, a, in a field of geography and that dualism was dominated by these binaries. So on the one side, if you see, he said this perceived is the first space and this conceived is the second space and this lived is the third space. By, uh, by this perceived space, he said, refers to directly experiencing world directly experiencing world of empirically measurable and mappable phenomena. This materialized speciality which presents human geography primarily as an outcome has become a dominant and familiar focus of geographical analysis, often to the exclusion of othering. So he said, because of these two, this perceived as well as the conceived spaces, this there was an othering of the of the concept, the important concept like space. So space has a no, uh, so this perceived and conceived spaces uh, are being dominated in our discipline over the last 200 years. So then only in late 20th century, as we have discussed in our first thesis, that there was a special turn in the field of geography, which brings this third space, which is the lived space which is the lived space. For example, if I'm speaking right now, it's, uh, at, at present, this is a lived space. I'm living it. I'm existing. I'm speaking. So this is a lived space. For He said the first uh, space, geographies, through accurate description of patterning and distribution. So many, many of the, uh, even today, you know, many of uh, the students think that geography is uh, the form, they just think about the formal geographies uh, to read about uh, the uh, the physical phenomena and the things which can be mappable. And, and if you bring the geographical thought here, if you bring the geographical thought, that thought, uh, that dualism, that dichotomy, is what is what conceived spaces so conceived means the subjective the mental okay the mental as well as the thoughts about the space so things are space this is perceived space objectivity is perceived material is perceived then real is uh, is perceived and then things in space is also perceived on the other hand if you see the subjectivity comes under the conceived spaces, which is second space, and then mental comes under the conceived, which is also a second space, and then 
uh, the imagined as well as the thought about space also comes under the conceived spaces. Then he continues to say that expanding the scope, these things, expanding the scope of geographical imagination to the breadth and the depth of geographical uh, imagination to the breadth and the depth that have achieved for historicality and sociality and hence rebalancing their critical empowerment requires creative deconstruction and rethinking of this bifurcation into two modes of spatial thinking and analysis. So this says that this historicality and the sociality was dominated over disciplines. So this historicality and sociality, they comes under this perceived and conceived spaces. Okay, so there was a dualism between both of them. So if you see the perceived space, the first or the uh, first knowledge or the empirical knowledge, uh, or you say the positivism, the positivism in terms of geographical thought was perceived and then conceived was counter to the perceived. But we have not bring the concept of space in the discipline of geography, which is very uh, essential and significant and crucial, uh, not only in geography, but in all social sciences, as well as the humanities. So that was all about this second thesis. Now I am going to discuss about the third thesis by Edward Soja. So in his third argument or thesis by Edward Soja, uh, draws primarily, the work draws primarily from the production of spaces by, Ed, uh, by Henry Lefebvre, uh, where he said, uh, where the soldier said that the, the scope and the substance of the geographical imagination, uh, the scope and the, and the substance in the geographical imagination is very different uh, what we we have been experiencing since the last two centuries, he said, he uh, he, he took the, the concept from the production of spaces in that where he said there is a dualism between the uh, materialism and the mental, and between the space and that he called the representation of space. So there are big dichotomies if you see. In, in our geographical thought as well, uh, you will see that there is a big dichotomies like the objectivity versus subjectivity, abstracts versus concrete, mental versus material, socialism versus capitalism, bourgeoisie versus proletariat. So there are many big dichotomies, and we geographers and we uh, geographers have been. Uh, uh, we are busy in these dichotomies. Uh, we are like engaged in these dichotomies, and we cannot see the the concept of space, which we talk in our second thesis, the lived space. Uh, he said that the geographical imagination could never capture the experiential experiential complexity, the fullness, and perhaps the unknowable mysteries of actually lived space or spaces what he described somewhat cryptically by intent as the spaces of the representation so there 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 is a lot of mystery there are a lot of unexplored spaces and he said we cannot explore them without in the without taking the concept of the lived space that is the third space uh, so he said we, that we need to uh, we need to take this third uh, perspective from from the dualism. He said we have to take this third perspective or othering, uh, like if you say the othering of the, this concept was over the time was not very much focused. So it it, it came into the domain of others. But now in late uh, 1960s, uh, this concept of lived space has been evolved by uh, by the largely by the works of Henry Lefebvre in production of space and Michael Foucault in heterotopologics. So in this he said that there is a radical break. We need a radical break from this confining dualism 
which was initiated in late 1960s, largely through the work of Michael Foucault and Henry Lefebvre. So these are the two famous uh, writers. Uh, Henry Lefebvre has wrote The Production of Spaces. Michael Foucault has wrote many books, but the famous, the famous one are the heterotopologies. So he described that their methods of criticizing the first second space dualism, which we have discussed in first thesis. You cannot understand this thesis until and unless you understood the second thesis and first thesis because that thesis or argument only bringing us here. So he said that the methods of criticizing the first and second space dualism as a critical thirding as othering, thirding as othering and he attributed to their challenging geographical imagination the origin of the third space as a radically different way of looking at interpreting and acting to change the, embarrass, uh, the embracing speciality of the human life. So making practical and theoretical sense of this world requires a continuous expansion of the knowledge or the knowledge formation. So a radical openness that enables us to see beyond what is presently known to explore other spaces. So there are many spaces which are which, which we are not found of, we, we, we are not aware of. So our role being a human uh, geographer, our role is to find those mystical spaces, to uh, dwell in that spaces, to know about them. So we can only know about them when we understand the concept of the third space, which is very relevant after the, then. Uh, and there was a special turn, it's nowadays a dominating one. Uh, but the concepts like postmodernism, the post structuralism, uh, structuralism, then post colonialism, and feminism so all of these concepts, uh, all of these, uh, these, uh, uh, these subjectivities in today's dis in human geographies are taking a dominant shape in the field of uh, geography. In his fourth argument, he uh, he gave the example of uh, the emerging geographers within the field of cultural studies, the critical cultural studies. So, one of the uh, geographer, the famous one, is the Bell Hooks. Uh, she is a American, African American writer as well as a social critique. So, he in, she enriches our understanding of the lived space by infusing it with radical cultural politics and new political strategies to deal with the multiple axes of oppression built around the race, class and gender. So, my point here is to make you understand that in Edward Soja's the fourth argument, he uh, he said that the concept of this third space have been explored. It has been explored or expanded uh, mainly by the critical cultural geographies. It is expanded by the cult critical cultural geography, and uh, there were many uh, more such. Uh, geographers who took interest in this critical cultural geographies. So spaces can be real and imagined. Spaces can tell stories and untold histories. Spaces can be interpreted, appropriate and transformed through artistics and literary practice. This was said by the Pratibha uh, Parmat and this is very important. She said that the spaces can be real and imagined. Spaces can tell a story. So there are multiple spaces. You have to understand that there is not one uniform space, but there are multiple spaces because it is a combination of of uh, the spaces. Uh, uh, if you take an example, 
uh, there can be a political space, there can be an economic space, there can be a, a, a cultural space or natural space. Uh, within home also you have a space uh, that can be called as a private space. And in a public you ha have a uh, public space. So similarly, this culture, this critical cultural geography is try to explore that the spaces are not uniform but they are multiple. There are n number of spaces and there are mysterious spaces which have not been recognized. So our role of the human geographer is to, is to find out those, those spaces. Uh, so in, in his third, uh, fourth argument, Edward Soja said that over the past few decades, the most creative exploration of the third space and hence the most accomplished expansion in the scope of geographical imagination have come from broadly from uh, the defined field of critical cultural geographies from critical cultural geographies so you have to understand that this expansion of this third space the knowledge of third space has been expanded largely by the critical cultural geographies particularly prominent here has been the work of feminist post-colonial critiques okay so these these two are the most dominant one in the field of human geography which which are shaping and again reshaping the concept of space who approaches the new cultural politics of class race and gender so they consider this these attributes of class, race, and gender within the spatial context from a radical postmodernism perspective. So, postmodernism is what that there are multiple subjectivities. You have to understand there is no uh, absolute truth. There is no absolute truth. Truth is subjective. Uh, my truth and your truth may be different. The people living in Africa uh, or in, in any tribe, they have their own truth. Uh, whereas the people who are living in cosmopolitan cities like Singapore, New York, they may be having their own way of life or truth or nature of uh, their uh, ex existence. So this, uh, this perspective, this uh, radical postmodernism perspective looked at the multiple su subjectivities of the people, of this class, of the race, of the gender. One of the accomplishments accomplishment of these scholars uh, and activists has been to make human geography today more transdisciplinary than ever before. So the one of the main uh, uh, <coughs> accomplishment if you see here in this argument he said that uh, this uh, now this human geography is going to be more and more transdisciplinary means uh, uh, this human geography is not strict to one uh, field. There are multiple subfields within the human geographies, and it is going to be the uh, one of the most transdisciplinary. Again, if you uh, if you are uh, uh, in present context, if you look at in present context or contemporary text or contemporary times of geography, you will find that human geography is very much highly trans disciplinary and there was one more concept uh, by Bhaba which says that the third space is uh, third space in the perspectives of post-modernism post-colonialism and post-feminism urges us to be ready to go beyond to cross boundaries to live somehow beyond the borders of our times so this this is the reality this is the uh, reality that uh, we are facing today in human geography the field is expanding beyond its control we have to cross these boundaries because the, it is becoming more transdisciplinary after the uh, spatial turn okay this brings us to now to the last uh, summative argument that is thesis Fifth. Now we will understand about the thesis or argument fifth. So in his last argument uh, of Edward Soja, he sums up 
all the five, uh, all the four previous arguments, and uh, he said that continuing the project initiative by uh, Henry Lefebvre and expanding its new direction that will sound with more contemporary relevance, the new human geographies emerging from the critical cultural studies. So. As you see, as you have seen in in, in his fourth argument, uh, he he mentioned about the bell hooks in an African American writer, uh, uh, which says that uh, the space has now become a platform for uh, for uh, for a resistance against the oppression. So. In that sense, uh, if you see, the critical cultural studies are explicitly specializing the radical subjectivities and the political practices. It is not only the theoretical part of it, but there are also activists uh, who are in, 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 in space, they are fighting, in, in the real lived space or third space, they are fighting the oppressions. There are many uh, group of people who are being... Uh, uh, who are being uh, marginalized uh, by on the basis of class, color, or uh, or a gender. So that is why this lived space, according to Bell Hooks, uh, in terms of critical cultural studies, have become very much relevant. It has become a space of resistance uh, uh, towards against the oppression. So see the both with critical. Uh, so she said. Uh, so this says that the critical cultural studies are explicitly specializing the radical subjectivities and political practices. When I say political practices, it means the activism, the political activists, okay, who are fighting this uh, concept, who are uh, who are introducing this concept in real ground on actual lived space, both with critical spatial and consciousness that extends far beyond what has existed in the past. So if you see, so this is the special turn, this is the ontological shift uh, which, is, which, which is becoming relevant in the, in the human geographies, reflecting what was earlier described as ontological shift. It was ontological shift and, and a critical thirding as othering. These scholars are opening up the new and still relatively unexplored realms of radical political action centered and cited in social production of lived space. So this is very important. It is rooted in the social production of lived space. So every oppression, every resistant, every action on, on, this, on this planet uh, which is related to humans is, is in the lived space. Few are visible, few are not visible. So it is the role of human geographer, it is the role of human geographer to look upon that, uh, that oppression based on the class, gender and race. So he continues to say that uh, reflecting what was earlier described as ontological shift and the critical thirding or othering, these scholars the scholars like Bell, Bell Hooks, okay, the scholars like Bell Hooks, the Baba, and then Rose. So these are the emerging uh, geographers in the field of human geography. These are emerging geographers who are who are taking this discipline across the boundaries, and they are taking this discipline. Uh, be, uh, they are making this discipline as a transdisciplinary, and we have to cross these boundaries to in a, in order to. Uh, in order to reduce, in order to reduce this d disorder, in order to reduce the oppression, which is based on class, gender, and and the race, and uh, uh, it is a strategic choice that is aimed at constituting a community of resistance. So it is a strategic choice. Okay, it is a strategic choice. You have to take it as a strategic choice, which will aim to to. Uh, which will aim to constitute a community of resistance which can be uh, as empowering and potentially emancipatory as those formed around the making of history and the constitution of human society. So with this he concludes that 
over the last 200 years, if you see, uh, not only 200 years, but over the time, over the human civilization, so this history and constitution of human society was only dependent on the time, or the, it was only dependent on the temporal aspect, aspects, but there was no concept of the space. So that is why it becomes so much crucial and relevant to bring this concept of lived space or the third space which says that space is portrayed as a multi-side and contradictory oppressive and liberating space can be multi-side it can be contradictory it can on the other side it can be oppressive and it can be liberating it can be a passionate space can be passionate and it can be a routine space can be knowable and it can be unknowable. It is a space of radical openness, a state, a site of resistance and struggle, a space of multi representations, investigable through its binary oppositions, but also where there are always other spaces. So, space, spaces are multiple spaces. Spaces are not uniform, they are multiple spaces and with this uh, uh, I will end up here the five summative arguments that says that this, the last uh, argument, uh, the last it is written that the opportunity to reasset the expanded theoretical and strategically political importance of critical spatial imagination may be what is most new and different and most challenging and exciting about the human geography today. If you see, this is the most exciting and uh, as well as challenging in the uh, new human geography which is shaping and again reshaping and shaping with time and space. So. That was all about the space by Edward Soja. For more such videos related to the uh, geographical concept, please subscribe to my channel.